Hi guys, welcome to the City Aperture channel. My name is Jose and I go by City Aperture. And uh, this week we are doing something we've done once before in the channel, and that is we're going to figure out a fictional house. We're going to figure out the layout of it, we're going to do the plans, we're going to do the elevations, and hopefully by the end of this series we will have a 3D model. Now I've done this once before, and I'll show you here this, if you remember, if you looked at it, this is my 3D model of the Incredibles house, right? And I'll put a link here showing the whole series that I did where I went from sketching the house all the way through to having a 3D model of it. Uh, renderings of the interior, everything, the whole shebang. This week, when you've already seen the description so you know, we are doing another house from the Incredibles and it's one of my favorite characters actually in that movie which is Edna Modes. You know, ooh, wrong side. Edna Modes. She is so much fun, and her house is just amazing. And The Incredibles, you know, has some of the best architecture in in a Pixar movie, or maybe in any <laughs> animated movie. Um, the Incredibles house is very much a mid-century house. Edna Mode's house is super contemporary. Um, it is abstract. Her furniture is abstract. Everything. Um, so we're gonna sit down and we're gonna figure out. What her house looks like, you know. There's a few images now. There's two movies out that show her house. So I think we finally have enough information to figure out the house. Unlike in the Incredibles house, we don't have an aerial view, but I think there's still enough there to figure it out. I even found some concept art of what the house looks like. So let's just get right into it. So let's go ahead and dig in. Um, we are going to mostly focus on just the exterior, sort of getting a general shape of what the house's mass looks like in this video, uh, because I think it's going to take a little bit of time to figure that out. There's not a lot of images of the house on uh, um, out there, actually, even though it's been in two films now. Um, and we'll start with this. I want to show you this image of the house because it shows us the general idea behind the house in that there's basically two masses. Let's flip back to my screen and uh, here I'll show you in this sort of scrap piece of paper that what we can see from that 3D view is that there's basically one large volume to the house and then there's another volume that sort of looks like it floats but there's actually uh, attached part below it, right? That's sort of that's sort of a front elevation of it. But that's the general shape of the front of the house, right? And I think, I believe from the other side, just having studied these images for a bit, is where you still read the large volume with the smaller volume on there. And then below there's, well, and we'll get into this, but there's another volume behind it that I believe is also floating. And we'll look at some images to represent that. Um, let's switch back to the image I was looking at. Um, so you can see, you know, you can read three distinct large volumes from it. Uh, so we're going to dig that in. And we're going to, uh, I'm using, as we flip back to my to my drawing board here, I'm using a gridded sheet because that's going to help us keep proportions right. We're not going to draw the scale today um, because the scale I think we're going to end up figuring out when we switch to AutoCAD and we're going to be able to blow it up and shrink it down. Um, if we start with a small volume, you can see it has five, and we'll just count, we'll generally, let's just say start right about here. I'm going to put two elevations on this. So it has five bays, right, five glass. Here, let me put the image back up. You can see the smaller volume has five of those window base right so that's going to be our that's going to be our base for scale or proportion if you will all right so the small volume has five and that's this five that i've marked here right the large volume i counted eight of them so we're going to go that's four eight right so that sort of gives us a general idea of the height um i'm going to figure Generally speaking, you have four high for this. And as we go through, you'll see. So we got those four, eight, 
this is sitting on top of a three wide. Let's go like that. So here is the beginning of our front elevation. Now I haven't drawn this out beforehand, but I have looked at the drawings quite a bit. Yeah. And we'll begin to distinguish the volumes because as we know this has sort of a concrete wall that kind of wraps it like this like a U, right? All the way around while this volume only has it at the top. Right? And now I know I said we'd only look at the we we're gonna focus on the exterior, but I'm gonna to switch to an interior image. And this is actually an image of the is a concept image, I believe. I found this online that shows, and there's two of them, I'll flip back and forth, that are showing sort of the, the wall looking at the entrance of the house. The entrance of the house is at the back from what we're seeing on the exterior image I've been showing, right? So here we can see that there's clearly a volume coming off to the right, but when you look at the second sort of a concept image, there's a volume to the left on the steps going, with steps going up to it. If you think back at the movie, whenever they're in the living room, uh, in the very first movie, Mr. Incredible is talking to Edna, uh, towards the end of that conversation, she starts going up the steps. I'll show an image of the steps that she, that she starts to go up. That's the steps that are in, back to the concept image, this concept image. So that tells me there's a volume sticking out to the other side. Let's switch back to our rendering here. So these are the glass panes, right? This large volume here is the one that has that very, I don't want to call it decorative wall, but it's that massive wall with, I guess it's art, but it almost looks like a fossil on the wall. So this is one volume to the right. There's another volume sticking out this way. And I counted that volume to be about five wide. And this volume is unique in that it's just floating. Let's switch back to that image again. There is nothing below it. I'm not going to concern myself too much about the structural integrity of this house at this point because um, we're going to see another point where there seems to be a volume of space floating. But yeah, I believe this volume to be, um, in this image you can count there the, the a couple of lines that are showing the concrete. So I'm going to believe this volume to be five wide just sort of coming off. It's sort of a balance, you know, there's a little bit of symmetry to this house. Right, but this is a solid concrete volume coming out of here. Well, this is all glass. And this is glass below as well. Right, so essentially this is our front elevation, and we're gonna pretty it up a bit with the patio in front that does, this patio goes beyond there, and then it goes into a hill, right? I'm going to take out the Sharpie. And these are their glass mullions, and this is all glass. Just like this is all glass. These lines that I'm doing are sort of uh, the symbol we put on elevation drawings whenever we want to show something is glass. It's meant to show a shine or a reflection. I know what this line is like so. Now this, oh, I missed, uh, I lost track of where it was as far as my exterior. So let's switch back to our exterior drawing. And uh, this bottom piece, so let's come back over here. So this bottom piece also gets two lines similar to all this. Now you might say, why are you starting with the elevation, Jose? 
why not go to a floor plan? Because right? I think this elevation is going to help us figure out this floor plan, right? So now we have our front. Right? That's our front. We're going to do the side elevation. The side elevation gets a bit tricky because I know we have the high volume. We'll start it out back here. I want to leave myself room. We'll start it out here. That's where the front volume is. Again, by looking at the windows, I can tell that this side volume starts three bays. Cool. Three bays behind. Right, we'll respect this. Question is, how far back does that go? It almost, to me, looks like it goes maybe a little bit further back than the front of it is. The front is clearly five bays. Let's give it six for now. That's three, six. It's a little deeper than it is, than it is wide, right? With the bottom part matching that. This is where that patio is, which I think goes all the way back. Right in here is where we have the trees doing this. This is where the pool is. Oh, cut one there. So, thinking here, again, this back volume is where it gets a bit tricky. And we're going to have to look at some images. Because I believe I counted, well, I even counted, let's switch back to this image. I counted one, seven. I'm counting seven bays of the glass, but we'll get into this when we're looking at the plan. I believe this volume back here is actually set back. It is, so it's not at the same plane as this wall. It's not at this plane, and it's not necessarily at this plane. I believe it's set back at least one or two bays. Um, so I think we're not seeing all of the glass. I think there's a much a very deep, deep, deep space. So I'm gonna for right now consider it. I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna go ten deep there, right? And I also, you know, it's hard to tell, but I don't believe it's at the same level as either of these two spaces it's clearly it's raised and it's back um, so we'll just go in the middle here because I believe it'll be raised slightly kind of like this I, I, I believe it to be this kind of a space with actually not much below it and we'll get into why I think there's not much below it, but I believe there's only maybe two or three spaces below it, and then the rest of it floats. Um, and let me show you actually why I believe that right now. We'll switch to this exterior view. So this is from the second Incredibles movie. This is the only time we see them coming out from her, what's essentially her front door that is at the back of the house. So when I say that, it is, this door is back here. You know, we think of this as the front of the house because this is what we see in the main shot, but I believe they enter through here, right? And I'll, when we get into the plan, you'll see why I believe that. Switch back to the image. So here you see them walking out the front door. This is after she's run all her exper experiments on the baby and it's given the baby back to her Jack-Jack back to uh, Mr. Incredible and he's leaving and you can see they go out the front door and here's another image there's building above them not only this building but there's a lot of building above it, enough enough to have a car park there right so because of this I believe that car is parked in here somewhere that's where I believe the car is parked that's why I believe this is quite deep and it's floating above the space, which makes sense because I believe this is where a lot of the bedrooms are going to be. Um, so as we're doing this, we could start even working on the floor plan as we go. 
Um, so we know that the floor plan is eight wide, right? Now, I think the main space, the living room, is essentially this square right here. I believe that because when we see this volume on the inside, we kind of see the end of the wall. This is that thick wall that they walk through to go into the entrance, right? And this is the wall where there's that long hallway. Well, actually, and I actually kind of that wrong. No, let's switch back. If we switch back to the living room view and I want the concept living room view in this one so we can see that the majority of the volume actually is behind there before the space the, the actual um, before we see the, the the big wall so but we can count one two three panes of glass so I think that's where I believe this wall to be. So if we switch back here, if we switch back to this, we can see one, two, three back. So this is where I believe the, the big wall is. Kind of like that, right? So now it's the, the plan is starting to take shape. Um, we can solidify some of this. This whole volume is above, so we can already... Now... Here's where we're making some assumptions. I don't actually know how deep this is. I've looked for a lot of views to figure out this depth. And I couldn't find it anywhere. I assume there's a bit of symmetry to this space. And I think that's a safe assumption. If I was designing this house, I would do that. I would try and have some symmetry to the space. Right? Same thing here. I believe this wall to start over here. I would assume it begins in the same location over there, but I actually have no reason for it to start there. I would probably start even with this building. Now I also count it three back. And the reason I count three back, sort of like that, is because when we go, let's go to an image of once you go in the front door, the entrance, and this is sort of an iconic thing when you, when you remember the movies, that every time you enter her house, you go through this long hallway. It starts wide, kind of like this, and then you just go past this narrow, narrow hallway until you get to the main wall. So this is where I believe we have sort of the wide entrance that then narrows to the tiny hallway that would be centered in this wall. Right, and that way you could have space on either side for the, for that. Um, this might be hard to see. I don't want to fully darken that, but we'll see that take shape. I, I think you can see that well enough on the plan. Um, so then I believe the rest of this volume here is actually... Well, actually, I believe this is lined up there. When I think about it. And this volume that we've marked out here... I went back 10, there's 3, 5, 10. I believe this is actually a floating volume. Like that. We know on the ground floor there is space over here. Right, so now let's start darkening some of the spaces. entrance, front door, steps, living area, up to the other spaces. And then when you come out, here is where the car was parked, in in here somewhere. And you're not probably drawing the car way out of, way too big, but you get the idea. The car pulls up below the house there. So in that sense, we can go ahead and finish this elevation as well. This the main volume of the house here. Let's 
switch to our thick sharpie for the ground plane right like so this is the solid volume that we see uh, yeah this is all plum free here because this side is solid like so this is slightly beyond all of this now let's switch back to this exterior view to double check a couple of things as we do this yeah so this is all glass so let's come back over here this has similarly like that and this floor like so Below here we have the line. There, there. This face is also solid, right? So for the sake of illustrating, we'll do so a lot of glass in this house, which is you know typical of some super contemporary houses, right? So this is all glass. Do the glass symbol here. This is all glass. This is concrete. Let me see if there is some. This is all concrete. Let me just do. And we also did this here. Barely shows. Let me do it with the Sharpie. So this is concrete. Concrete. Right, so there's our front elevation. This is our side elevation. We got the first floor here. And then as far as the second floor, let's sort of give ourselves an idea of what the second floor is going to look like. Now, this is very broad, right? Like, where are the rooms up here? Um, I've sort of started to think about what we would do as far as a program for this house. We know there's a living room, right? We have the living room. We know there's an entrance. This is this entrance way. We have the living room. Um, as we watch the movie um, there's a scene in the kitchen if there's a kitchen you would imagine there's a dining room there's a scene of a sitting room um, when I say scene it's one image I found of a sitting sitting room um, I would imagine in this first floor we have a powder room of some kind Um, there's a pool, but I don't know that there's a pool house. Uh, we've seen the workshop, which I believe that would be in a basement. So then you would have to have a master suite. The rest of it is sort of up to us to figure out. We don't really see any other spaces in this house. We've seen the parking area, which is over here. But I mean, just... From some experience, we're going to have some kind of guest suite. Right? Being a guest room that's more isolated with a, its own restroom. And then we'll have a certain number of bedrooms. And a certain number of baths. Right? So for the workshop, we'll eventually do a basement plan. Because I do believe it's in the basement. Uh -oh. Now this video is already getting quite long, so I'm going to cut it off here. Um, 
I will put an image of this drawing up now, sort of a better image so you guys can look at everything. Shoot me any comments you have of what you're thinking so far of where we're at. Next video, we're going to start divvying up these spaces into rooms as well as trying to figure out maybe the reason why I haven't started a, the workshop slash basement yet is because based on where we lay out uh, stared down to the basement is how we're going to lay out the workshop. So I do want to explain something here before we go. The reason why I've been drawing on grid paper and I do like the sketch and grid paper quite a bit is because this lets me I know the proportions are right this isn't necessarily to a scale I normally like to draw on grid because I can draw to a scale I can determine this square is one foot or it's two feet or you know or what you're gonna I can even say this is a quarter of an inch and then you know one of them is an inch which actually is the, how the grid's laid out what I've done here is I haven't yet determined what this spacing is. I just know this spacing exists. I can take this drawing and blow it up however I want to say, now that's 5 feet or that's 10 feet. I don't think it's 10 feet, but you get what I'm saying. I could say that's 8 feet and it'll let me scale this up to how big this space needs to be. We will get into that when we switch to drawing in AutoCAD. In AutoCAD, I may very well draw this without a scale but knowing that there's a grid and then I can blow it up and down based on making the rooms work. We're first going to lay out the rooms generally, proportionally if you will, and then we'll go from that into an actual hard dimension that makes sense for all of this. There you guys go. That is our first step into figuring out what Edna Moat's house looks like. Um, here it is again if you don't to see the final where we're at currently right we got two elevations we have a rough or conceptual schematic first floor and second floor we are next step is we're going to take this drawing so i'm going to scan and blow him up so we can just sketch on it and try and lay out rooms you know we have the beginnings of a program which you know i showed here at the very end towards the top there i'm going to put this image well, I'm going to host this image somewhere and there'll be a link so you guys can look at it. Make any comments you think you might find and maybe we can go ahead and figure out what might be wrong. Next video we're going to, well next video of this series, not get necessarily the next video on the channel, next video of this series we're going to lay out rooms. After that, after we've done a general layout, so a very schematic layout of the rooms, we're going to take this into AutoCAD and we're going to do a hard line drawing. After the hard line drawing we'll get into a model and hopefully by the end we have a 3D print that I can put next to the Incredibles house, you know, and we'll be able to even compare scale-wise sizes. So, thanks for watching the video, guys. If this is the first time you're seeing one of these videos, check out the Incredibles video that I have up one of the sites. Um, how we did it last time, we're going to do the same thing again. Keep watching. All right, see you guys in a little bit.